Hi Capricorn, welcome to this special love reading, which is called Can This Relationship Be Healed? This is for people who are either currently in a relationship that is going through a crisis and you're not sure if you want to stay or if it could, st you know, stay together. Or if you have broken up with somebody and you're thinking that maybe you should get back together with them. And I've been giving a disclaimer that says this is not obviously including very bad relationships that are based on abuse like uh, physical and severe emotional abuse. Okay, um, Those kinds of situations are very complicated. They're not that easy to just... Um, I mean, even I've been talking about infidelity because that seems to be a big reason why people split up. And even infidelity, I mean, sometimes if it's very deeply entrenched, uh, like a pattern with a person, then that could talk about some kind of psychological issue that they have that needs to be dealt with and that that isn't something that you can simply apologize for and move on. But in some cases, something like infidelity may be kind of a situational thing. It may be something that the person was going through at one point in their life, a lot of stress or what have you. You know, there are different things that prompt people to do things they wouldn't normally do. And um, another thing that has been coming up while I've been doing this, these readings is um, addiction. And addiction is one of those things that is kind of, I, I, could, I would say is iffy in that it can go either way. Either, I, I have hope that if you are with somebody who has some kind of a substance abuse problem that they can change. Obviously they have to want to change but to me, it's still one of those things that could be very severe and, um, you know, kind of a, a long-term ordeal where they get sober and then they backslide and things like that. And you would have to be very committed to wanting that relationship to work. Or someone can just quit like that and move on with their with their life. It's it's not something we can we can definitely say one or, or the other. But the problem that I have with any kind of physical abuse or something like that is that it tends to be some kind of maybe the the way that the person reacts to their own feelings of anger and if they have a hair trigger temper or just very traumatized background. Um, they may require a lot of counseling. I mean, I don't even know how, you know, I don't know the, the success rate of dealing with people who have um, very kind of like borderline personalities, but that's something that has to be dealt with um, on a much larger scale than just simply having them promise that they'll never do it again, that, t that tends not to work. Addiction is kind of one of those tricky things, though, because some people are able to get out of it on their own, surprisingly, even with serious addictions, and almost like they have that moment of clarity, and then they're done with it, and then some people they drag on for years. And same with, um, and same with infidelity. Sometimes People, they have a hard time giving up a, a partner and other people, they they were just going through some very uh, stressful times in their life and they really weren't in love with that person. You know, there's all kinds of things. But anyway, <laughs> not wanting to go too much into the, the different problems that people have, but um, I um, am going to be using the the Morgan Greer deck for the spread itself. And that's my usual deck. And then this is the Crystal Visions deck. And that's going to be just looking at shadow aspects. I'm just going to shuffle these for a few seconds. Shadow aspects of that you might need to work on within yourself because you can't really change anybody else. 
And it really makes a difference. I really feel that the way that you interact within a relationship, even if you feel that the other person is the problem, can can make all the difference. So I always say when you change, everything around you changes. It just can't help but change. And one thing in all the scenarios that I pose to you, I never uh, mentioned that perhaps you could be the one that is having an affair, Capricorn. So I just want to put that out there because that could possibly be going on too. I've been getting that Four of Wands quite a bit, which makes sense. It's the, it's the card of marriage and happy home. And then let's pick one of those Crystal Vision cards. Just cut the deck once. Put that in the middle. Okay. Well, we're going to look at what may have be the, the cards. It doesn't matter what order I pick these up with. It might be describing what's going on with this relationship, whether you're with this person or not. This is a card of happy marriage. And I actually, because of the Ace of Wands, um, my feeling is that, because the, the, this is a, let me, let me start with this one actually. This card, the Four of Pentacles, I immediately thought of Capricorn with this card, because this is like the, the person who works in the bank that's this great money manager and who's really on top of their game financially. But we're not doing a career reading here, so it's more of the solid kind of a thing. Now, sometimes it can be somebody who's too greedy, materialistic, um, and like a money grubber. <laughs> but what I, what I saw was this solid situation, like a solid marriage, and then something coming in that was very exciting, like a, a bright, shiny object. And that screwed everything up. So whether that was you, that's what made me think that some of you may have had a, um, a good thing going. Or you were with somebody. If you are part of this affair, maybe they had a ha happy marriage. See, these are both fours, so that's about structure. Um, and maybe you came in between that. Now, whether you're a man or a woman, and you're the, if you're the other woman or the other man in this relationship, even though you are participating in the cheating, the person who is the partner is the one who is to me most responsible because they are the ones who made their vows with that person or they are in that relationship. That doesn't mean that the other woman is not also responsible though. Of course, you would be responsible if you are that person. Um, so in other words, you didn't break up anything. They, um, the, the person that you, that decided to cheat with you is the one that strayed from their marriage. But that doesn't absolve you of any kind of um, responsibility. That's the, the point. Um, but we have the card, I thought this was very interesting here. We have the, the Five of Cups, which is a card of grief. Um, I didn't touch upon this. I wanted to touch upon this when I was doing those disclaimers. Another reason why people cheat is sometimes due to some kind of 
grief. For instance, and, and, and sometimes marriages break up when a child dies, okay? When there is some kind of a tragedy, the, the couples don't always uh, go closer, you know, grow closer. Sometimes a tragedy actually ends the relationship. So there may be something that happened um, that was seen in a as a tragedy or some kind of sadness. It could be the death of a parent. It could be the death of a child, maybe a miscarriage. And that was not handled by both people in a way that caused them to kind of um, bond more. That was kind of weakening it. Now, in my opinion, if that happens, it shows the the crack and cracks in the relationship, that the relationship wasn't solid to begin with. That's just my opinion about it. The other time where the, the tragedy or the sad occurrence can drive a wedge between the people is when one person blames the other for whatever happened. So there was a car accident and the, 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 you know, a child, the couple's child dies in the car accident and the, the wife blames the husband because he had a couple of drinks before he took the wheel and she can't forgive him for that. She may forgive him in, in, you know, to his face, but she really, she falls out of love with him for that because she blames him. And um, anyway, there's something like that. Or it can simply be that you thought that you were going to start this relationship with somebody who maybe they were married. And, um, and then I didn't even think about that, that some of you may be wanting to get back together with somebody who's in a marriage and you were having an affair with them. And they disappointed you because they made empty promises. You know, that's always the that's always one of the things that can happen. And this is the spiritual message in all of this. Um, by the way, this card is connected to Leo. I got like a Leo vibe from this in another way, because this is fire energy, this is fire energy as well. And when I saw this, I said, oh, maybe it's a Leo. But the, the strength card as the spiritual message is talking about self-esteem issues and how people get involved in, in relationships, like what motivates them. Sometimes when you're talking about a subject like infidelity, which seems to be what a lot of these readings are winding up, either that or addiction, uh, for me so far with all of the different signs that I've done. But um, this could mean, uh, one of the things that can happen is that a person is using an affair to boost their ego and and make them feel like they are desirable if they don't feel that way within their relationship. And if people had the ability to just openly tell their partner that that's why they did what they did, it could really heal a lot within that relationship that has been torn apart by infidelity. Because the person who is being cheated on not only do they feel deceived by their partner, but they feel like there's something wrong with them, that they are not desirable, that the other person is better than them. And if they could know the emotional turmoil that led their partner to go outside of the relationship, that might help immensely. Sometimes people cannot pinpoint those types of feelings or they are afraid to be that vulnerable. Why? I don't know. Maybe they feel like it will be used against them at a later date, that their partner will know that they really are very feeling very insecure and they don't want that person to know that. 
but um, the other thing that I would say to Capricorn is that the spiritual message is to be strong. This too shall pass. If you're really feeling a sense of sadness about something that ha has happened, um, maybe you're grieving the loss of this, this relationship that you thought was so solid. You thought it was so perfect. And it really wasn't. And that's got to be a big blow, too. I'm going to pick this card, the Shadow Aspect card, before I go to the last two cards. The Page of Swords, um, I wanted to see how, sh how they depict her. And I noticed that in some of the decks, I don't think these are all like kind of punk. Um, I was saying before that this was kind of a girly girl deck where they have a lot of feminine depictions, but it seemed like more classically feminine. This seems like it has a harder edge, maybe because swords are masculine signs. They're the air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And... So the women that represent those signs tend to be, even though they may ha have very feminine features physically, they tend to be more um, of that young energy, that assertive and outer energy. And you are a yin sign, Capricorn. So whether you're male or female, Capricorn is an earth sign. All earth signs and water signs are feminine signs. And so, with the shadow aspect, there's a, a thing with Capricorn um, that deals with the shadow side of your ruler Saturn. And this is pessimism, cynicism, and even, I would say, paranoia. And I was thinking, I, I was thinking of Richard Nixon, because Richard Nixon, of course, former president of the United States, involved, and I would say entrapped, in a scandal called Watergate in the 1970s. Richard Nixon was a Capricorn, was a son in Capricorn, and um, people that worked for him said that he was paranoid. With Capricorn, the paranoia is usually career-related that has to do with, or, or maybe even like related to money, where the person has gotten themselves up to a certain level and they don't want to go back down. So whether they have amassed a certain amount of wealth and somebody is threatening it, or whether it has to do with some career um, advancement and they don't want to be taken down a peg, and they can be very um, paranoid of losing that stature and so the in relationships with Capricorn you may be the type of person who is always trying to make sure that um, no one has anything over you and I and as I was saying before with talking about vulnerability this could apply to you as well you may have a, a difficult time kind of being open about how you are, how your feelings, and things like that, because you are, you really might feel like it's a dog eat dog world and you have to do whatever you can to protect yourself. And what I would say about that is that life may have shown that to you in some way, but if you operate with that sort of belief system, according to the law of attraction, it will tend to outpicture itself. It will tend to reflect your reality. And that means that you may come across people who are going to betray you because this is a card and I have this as what is coming in or the advice. I think it, it could be, I think it's more of the advice, but this is about being stabbed in the back, metaphorically speaking, of course. Feeling betrayed. I think as advice, it's saying to really, you know, don't push away those feelings. Feel them. 
um, you know, this card is a card of grief. This one is just understanding exactly what happened and not intellectualizing it, not trying to make excuses for it, but just understanding that this happened to you and that you can be strong, you can um, survive it, but you're not going to sweep it under the rug because some of you, you're very uh, detached. That doesn't mean that you don't have feelings, but it may be a temptation to kind of like allow life to just continue and not really discuss it and that would be um, that would be I think um, foolish also with the number 10 you could be dealing with the ending of a cycle including the ending of a relationship and it may be that this person is just not the right person for you and that that was one of the reasons why this happened as well because you were incompatible in other areas. Because we have as the outcome, the Fool card, which is one of my favorite cards, which is about kind of embarking on a new journey in life and not taking any emotional baggage with you. You're kind of like traveling light and just open to whatever comes your way, open to the mystery and um, Remember, you have Saturn going into your sign in late December, so you're entering that cycle. And I think that um, uh, life is a, is a big classroom. It's a learning experience. And uh, I think that Capricorns, wherever you are on the spectrum here, you're going to be just fine. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. I have a special through the end of this year, 20% off of all of my readings with the coupon code JUPITER. Okay, you guys. Take care. Bye.